let your church rise. Spirit, let your fire now run wild by your spirit. We have all overcome. Let your church. I want to greet you a blessed Sunday morning. Can we just greet one another? Good morning, good morning. What a beautiful Sunday. Thank God. Thank God that we are here. Amen. Uh, are you thankful? Are you thankful that you are in the house of the Lord? Just like David said, you know, King David in the book of Psalms. I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For a day in his courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. We thank God that we are in his courts, in his uh, sanctuary. So we welcome everyone. This is now the first Sunday of April. We're truly moving on. We are progressing, accelerating, ascending in the Lord. So I welcome everyone here in the sanctuary and those joining online for our first Sunday service in this month of April. Do we have any first time newcomer? Any first time newcomer? Okay, maybe on the way. We know there are some more coming on the way. So I'm glad that we are filling up the front seats first. So the overcomers would sit uh, down there at the back. So praise God. But we welcome everyone anyway. We welcome why we are here. And that's because of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God of Gods, Jesus Christ. Let's give him a big clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you, Lord. 
We welcome you, Lord. I want to encourage everyone. Can we just focus on the Lord Jesus? Let's not miss what God has for us. We just had a pre-taste of the Spirit's work and touch and His presence up there in the upper room that we could not pray in words, but just pray as the Spirit leads us, even in tongues. It's amazing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is amazing. So then let's not miss our portion. That's why we are here today. Let's be conscious of His presence and not of any other things around us. Amen? So set our hearts and our mind on Jesus. Can we all rise up? As we commit this in a word of prayer, Hallelujah. Sheri bonda na kerian da la rabo she kerere, roka bara deri ando la rabashe, doka kabara dende ribonda la raba, rekiri ando la rabashi didi ando raba, roka bara mundo rabashende. Father, the Creator of heaven and earth, we say good morning to you once again. Thank you that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and we would be glad in it. No matter what we face, no matter what situation, circumstance, or challenge that we face or around us, we are still thankful and joyful because you are the Lord God that we know is sovereign and control of all things and we could put our trust unto you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you consecrate each one of us. Lord, forgive us for any wrongdoing and faithfulness that we have done before you or before people. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, that we would be worthy to come to you. We would not pretend, O oh God, in coming to your presence. But Lord, with pure intention and sincerity in our hearts, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Let your purpose, let your agenda be done in our life, in the life of the church. And thank you, we set other things behind, O oh Lord. And if there's anything that is not in line with your will and purpose, let it not progress in our lives in this church, in Jesus' name. And Satan, you have no more power and authority against the people of God. You had been defeated more than 2,000 years ago. And we put where you belong under our feet in Jesus' name. For we have the victory. We have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you that you cover us with your precious blood. Lord, bless and guide and direct your people, those still on the way. Protect them, O oh God. With the same joy, looking forward for your presence and for what you had in store for each one of us. We would receive it by faith. To you be the glory, honor, and praise. All in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone would declare, Amen. 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 Please be seated for some announcement. Praise. Let's go now to our announcement. So today is the first Sunday. So first Sunday is our uh, prayer and fasting, uh, congregational prayer and fasting every Sunday. So those who are online, prepare your uh, elements for your communion. And also reminder, those who only uh, take communion, communion is uh, eight, uh, eight, at the age of eight and below. So, and those who understand the uh, communion I mean the area of communion okay uh, so worship with us every Sunday our service every Sunday is uh, 10 o'clock onwards uh, that's our first service and also it's um, join us in our platform this uh, in Facebook LSF London we have also LSF London and UK and also YouTube, we have uh, LSF London and TV. So not only this time, uh, first Sunday, but uh, uh, first service, but we have also our second service um, it starts at four. So those who can't come in the morning, join our service in the evening. Praise God. So next one, we have also our home cell group. So one way and growing, growing in the knowledge of God is through joining the small group. So connect with a group near you and you will grow in faith or we'll go in faith together. So, so and if you want also uh, your opening of Bible study, let us know if, uh, so we can uh, 
arrange your Bible study in your own area. Okay, next one, we have also um, prayer meeting. Prayer meeting is very important to each and every one of us. Amen? Yes, amen. Because there is power in prayer. So every Wednesday, we have a prayer meeting. This is via Zoom. So we're encouraging each one to join. Wherever you are, join our prayer meeting every Wednesday. And not only that, it's also Friday. That's our prayer service. Same time, 7.30 to 9 here in our church. Praise God. So also in the 20, okay. In April 21, or 21st of May, after the service, there would be a workshop teaching. This is a worship uh, teaching session. So this is a heart-to-heart -heart talk about worship. So on the 21st, there will be a teaching. It starts at um, 1 o'clock p.m. So the 21st. So Sister Joy and Brother Abishai, they will be teaching. So please, we encourage all the... Um, Musicians, if possible, those who are being used in the music to join this teaching. Praise the Lord. The next one as well, it will be on the, the 5th of May. This is a bit uh, exciting. Are we excited? Yeah. This is for the graduation. <laughs> graduation ceremony and baccalaureate service incorporated in the morning. So the baccalaureate incorporated in the service in the morning on the 5th. This is also a first Sunday of May. And graduation will start at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So here in this, um, the first Sunday, there's no evening service. So you have to take note, but please encourage those who are, uh, of course, in the afternoon, this is a graduation. If possible, we encourage your uh, your escort to come or your, whoever is coming, your visitor to join the service on that uh, graduation. Yeah. Okay, next one, 18th of May, Saturday, 10, e 10 a.m. to 4. Here in the church, it will be a home sale workshop. So the topics to be discussed here is effective moderating. Number two is um, growing and delegating. So that will be the topic on our home sale on the 18th of May. So take note here in the church, that's Saturday. Okay, next one, uh, the 25th of May, praise God, uh, it will be a 10th anniversary of one of the outreach, this Wells. Amen. Yeah, it will be on the 25th. That's the convention, and the 26th, it will be the celebration, that's Sunday. Right, next one, also uh, on the uh, 25th as well, we uh, need a volunteer for every ministry. It will be uh, greatly appreciated on this. Um, there will be a, a general cleaning, or cleanliness is next to godliness here in our church. So we need to, especially those who have stuff on the sala or basement, yeah, it will be great if you will be here so that we know where to clutter or what are the things to be cleaned. Or, yeah. Okay, exciting as well. Next one, or next one, we are looking or to disciple who got a heart to be in the sound ministry or any ministry wherein your heart is. Yes. Please, um, it's nice to have your own, uh, you know, commitment in the ministry. Not only in the sound ministry, but every ministry. Amen. We have evangelism, music, we have ushering. Amen. Yeah, so we're encouraging each one to uh, come with us, which, um, which you want to be committed in. Okay, so that, um, you know, the gift things in the Bible. And there will be a time that God will ask us. We will not dig our gifts, but we will use it. Utilize it for God's glory. Okay, next one, exciting, Israel tour. Seven days in the Holy Land. It will be October 23rd to October 30th. So we are also enlisting the names, those who are joining us. Yeah. There are still 20. Yeah, so Brother Chuck yeah, and Sister Lisa are now in the Holy Land. So that means uh, everything is, is smoothly opening. Amen. Glory to God for that. So yeah, so we are looking to be there in October. 
Right, next one, uh, fire drill. If you hear any uh, whistle, please avail. <laughs> yeah, uh, evacuate uh, the building calmly. I think that's all for our announcement. Thank you for listening. We'll go now to prayer intercession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Um, the Lord imprint in my heart. Second Chronicles 7, verse 1. And when Solomon dedicates the temple, when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Praise Amen. God, Lord. We thank you, O oh God. Lord, this is all our prayer, O oh God. We're in unity as one church, Lord. We say yes and amen. We're our intercessors for the Lord. We pray for open heavens. Sisters and brothers, this, are, oh, this is open heaven. This is the sweet smelling aroma that the Lord is waiting for us, Lord. We pray, oh God. We just glorify. Lord, give you the glory, the honor, the highest praise, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, this is your platform, Lord. These are your people, Lord, oh God. Lifting our prayers, Lord, oh God, in the open heaven, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, oh God, Holy Spirit, we praise your name. We give you glory and honor, Lord, oh God. Lord, we pray for over flowing prayers lord and each and every one of us lord overflowing prayer oh god prayers oh god to you lord in the name of jesus lord season our prayers lord oh god as we pray lord and declare our hearts lord are pure oh god lord worshiping you praying for you oh god in spirit and truth lord jesus oh god lord as we live our prayer lord oh god we pray oh god for our leaders lord we pray for the leaders of this country lord in the name of jesus lord lord you have said lord we will pray for our leaders, oh God, so that we will have a peaceable life, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, as you have appointed our pastors, Lord, you have anointed, oh God, them. You have appointed our leaders, anointed them as well, Lord. Even your disciples, Lord, oh God. And Lord, we speak, oh God, for your, not only the appointment, oh Lord, but your anointing, oh God, of the leader of this country, Lord, oh God. Lord, the election will come, Lord, but this is your election, Lord. You will pick, oh God. You will pick and choose, oh God, the right person for this country, Lord, as we pray for revival, as we pray for a circumcision of this country, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, oh God. Lord, we pray for revival of this country, Lord, oh God. Lord, as you speak, oh God, and see who is going to be the next leader of this country, Lord, oh God. We pray, Lord, for the anointing, Lord, oh God. Lord, that this leader, oh God, will bow down to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, that they will be submitted, oh God, to you in the name of Jesus. Their heart will be submissive. Their heart will be, oh God, circumcised, Lord, oh God. That, Lord, they will follow your ordinances, not the ordinance of this country, Lord. Not the law of the earth, Lord, but the law of the Lord in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we speak for your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, our hearts, oh God, are crying for your mercy that endures forever. Lord, we pray, oh God, for your consuming fire for the leaders, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, oh God. Lord, that we will come again and see, oh God, your glory, oh God, glorying this whole earth in the name of Jesus. Glory for your name in the whole UK, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we pray for these leaders, oh God. And Lord, we're very expectant, Lord, oh God, that the anointing, oh God, is from you and not from men. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, 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 as we pray for these leaders, oh God, we pray as well for the cabinet members, Lord. For, Lord, oh God, the appointment, oh God, of the next leader, oh God, the members and, and all, oh God, the Christian cabinet members, Lord, that they will rise up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. There will be boldness, oh God, in your Christian leaders, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, that they will speak up, oh God, of you. And, Lord, the boldness, oh God, will not be from 
from this heart and heart but a pure heart oh god in the name of jesus lord oh god lord we're rallying oh god and praying for this in the name of jesus the lord we see you oh god open heavens oh god lord thank you so much oh god for hearing this prayer lord oh god lord as your children lord oh god we're rejoicing expecting for this prayer lord thank you for your revival lord jesus oh god lord when trust in your hands oh god lord your hands oh god are too long to to have all of this being done oh god in the mighty name of jesus holy spirit hover oh god in this country lord over in all this earth oh god in the name of jesus lord your superiority oh god your name above everything oh god in the name of jesus lord 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 we continue to pray for our pastors as well oh god the fivefold ministries oh god lord oh god you continue oh god to equip them oh god you continue oh god to give your instructions oh god and lord that you continue oh god to hear from you lord jesus oh god lord there's nothing that they will serve but you lord as they tender the flock lord as they lead us oh god to you lord in the name of jesus lord and lord oh god we pray for every brethren lord who have been slack and lord every brethren lord who have been backslid and lord and lord you have said lord you will leave the 99 and look for the one oh god lost and lord it be the heart of everyone lord oh god searching oh god not only the pastors lord we pray as well for brethren lord oh god to seek for the for the one missing oh god that we will have been boldly oh god custom oh god with love in this church lord love and peace oh god and unity oh god and lord we cancel any form of the devil that try to destroy each and every one of us oh god we will be in unity oh god oh god Pray, praying oh god and just glorifying your name lord oh god we pray for anointing for each and every one of us oh god that all of these members here oh god even the outreaches oh god we will be used oh god to edify your body lord oh god to give your glory oh god in the church in the name of jesus lord and lord oh god we pray oh god that we will be in the heart of worship each and every one oh god a love and unity oh god in the name of you we pray for one another we will love one another lord oh god as you have given us oh god your life oh god we will not be taking granted oh god we pray oh god for for manifestation in each and every household oh god each and every family so oh god young and old lord parents oh god children lord oh god unite us oh god and lord we pray oh god for healing in each and every one lord healing of physical bodies for healing oh god spiritually oh god mentally emotionally lord anything that is dying on us lord revive and heal it oh god in the name of jesus lord lord we thank you for healing oh god lord especially our spiritual life lord we pray for healing oh god lord that there will be a sweet spending aroma of prayer in each every household oh god in the name of jesus lord oh god as you have speak lord have you been breathing my heart lord overflowing prayer oh god in the name of jesus overflowing prayer oh god that we will never cease oh god to seek for you lord lord we pray oh god for each and every household oh god, that this will be your oh god heart desires for each and every one lord lord we thank you oh god lord we just glorify your name lord words cannot be enough oh god praying oh god words cannot be enough oh god to glorify your name lord oh god lord we thank you oh god and lord that everything oh god that we said today lord we pray oh god even in our hearts and in our mind lord we pray oh god that this is yes and amen to you lord Yes and amen to you Lord oh God. Lord we unite in prayer in love Lord oh God. Even not only in NSF to thing Lord but all the outreaches oh God. Let be heart of let it be a heart of worship Lord. Let it be a heart of overflowing prayer Lord in the name of Jesus Lord. Lord we thank you for the equipping of your saints. We thank you Lord oh God for more oh God souls to be given to you Lord in the name of Jesus Lord. Harabashanda rabahanda rabahanda bishanda harabahanda rabahanda Lord we glorify your name Lord all praises all glory Lord all honor to you Lord in Jesus name amen just stay in this atmosphere I, I i believe the lord is doing something because i didn't know what what sister was gonna just just say but this morning the lord was speaking to me about the cloud of glory and he pointed me to that verse it says then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting and the glory of god filled the tabernacle 
Moses was unable to enter the tent because of the cloud had settled on it and the glory of God had filled the tabernacle. Why a confirmation, church? This is not orchestrated by men, but I believe the Holy Spirit is up to something and I don't know what it is, but I know it's something amazing, something good, something that will revive His church. So just for a moment, let's just be sensitive. Let the music play for a moment. Let's just be sensitive to the Lord while the music just plays softly in the background. Let's just see what the Lord is saying to us this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're just going to begin to, to worship, but you can begin to cry out for a little moment. Just for a moment. Look on our mama sikim did it make me come on come on come on begin to lift up his praise for a moment come on just begin to worship him for a little moment thank you Holy Spirit Oh shikidi bo sikim bibi la mama sikim did it book on the Oh thank you for your cloud of glory Oh the cloud of glory fill this place Let your cloud of glory fall Come on, begin to lift up, begin to lift up his name, the name of Jesus, the name above every name, above every disease. Oh, we ask for more of your presence, Lord. We ask for your cloud of glory, the cloud of glory, your cloud of glory, Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory fall, fall afresh on us. Come on, begin to worship Him. Oh, yeah, mama, mama, shekere, bokore, bebe, mente. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, ah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, we worship you in spirit and in truth. You deserve all our praise. You deserve all our glory. We cry out to you, God, King of heaven, King of heaven. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, fall afresh on us, fall afresh, fall afresh, fall afresh. Let there be revival, let there be revival. That I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more. Let's just flow the spirit for a moment. Oh, let's set a fire. Oh, set a fire down. That I can't contain, that I can't control, and I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. Come on and give me more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down. And I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Oh, set a fire down in my soul that I can't. 
Hallelujah. Yabara ma shere bo la kabarabo. Yabara ma nerabo. Oh, your presence is awesome, God. Your presence is awesome, glorious. You know what, church? God reminded me of that vision. Maybe you still remember when the Lord showed me there's a gushing forth of water like a river, but on the top there's a fire. I think you would remember that vision I shared. There's a gushing or running water like a river. And then, but on the top, as it's running, on the top, there is a fire. Hallelujah. You know what, church? He is the living water. He is the river of life. The water of life refreshes each one of us. That's Jesus. He refreshes us. So just receive the refreshing by the river of life, the water of life, Jesus Christ. Refreshing us in His presence. And at that fire is rekindled in every heart, in every spirit of His people. Fire is rekindled that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ would remain on fire, not cold or lukewarm. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is on fire. And so have that fire of revival as the Lord promised in you and me, deep inside of us. Fresh anointing, double portion of the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon His church, upon each one of us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Is there one more word that's lingering before we continue? We're just going to give maybe 60 seconds or so. Just if you have a word that the Lord has put and you feel that it's for the church, I'm going to give you a quick moment. Do not lose this moment. Do not lose this time. If the Lord has put in your word, be bold and, and declare it with faith. You are the God who revives your people, oh Lord God, and that you rule and you reign. You so, you, you, hallelujah. You let us see, oh God, the vision that comes from you. And so, oh God, we just bow down, oh Lord God. How we, oh Lord, adore, oh Father, your greatness and that your vision, oh Father, is that we, your people, the nation, around your throne Lord particularly the land of Israel oh Lord God you have shown coming back to you adoring you oh God and that Lord hallelujah we bless your name oh Father that every nations of this world oh God acknowledge you the Lord over, over all oh Lord God and that the cherubim so oh God in the beginning oh Lord God worshiping they cannot even face you, oh Lord God, covering their eyes, oh Lord. But then they adore you together with your people, oh Father, Lord. Hallelujah, oh God, for this church stands with you, your anointing flow with that river, oh Lord God. Hallelujah, the living God you are. We bless your name. holy 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 is the one who sits on the throne holy is his name holy is his name behold the king behold the lamb of God he who was and is and is to come mighty is his name mighty in battle mighty in deliverance Oh, the name of the name of Jesus.
Praise God, hallelujah. Stay, stay in the same uh, attitude you are in, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory. What the Lord is saying to us, hallelujah. That he wants more than anything. He wants relationship. He wants that we don't do things just we have to do. But more than anything else, he wants you and me to come into this vital relationship, real relationship. Beyond activities, beyond the commitments, beyond the things we have plans. But he desires more than anything. Relationship is says, come unto me, all those who are heavy laden. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. You are heavy with many things. You are heavy and taken up with many things. But he says, come unto me and I'll give you my rest. Amen. Hallelujah. So he, he wants you to come into this real intimacy. And intimacy is not possible as long as you are so concerned about things outside. Intimacy is based on the relationship. If you are true in the relationship, he is true and faithful as well. And as you turn to him and you say, Lord, I am done with all those things. I really want to have a real relationship. You can be in the house with the family. You can be in the house with everyone in the family. Yet you are not relationship. And when the relationship builds with everyone in the family, sibling, parents, and everyone, then you grow into another level. And the level comes only after the relationship is cared for. So the Lord encourages you and me. Let's come and take this relationship seriously. He says, I'll call you my son. I'll call you my daughter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I believe Sister Julie was just singing. Um, if you want to come quickly, Sister Julie, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before we declare a song of victory, thank you, Lord. worshiping. This verse is coming back. So is it here in Psalms uh, 46 verse 4 to um, 11? Is it here? There's a river whose streams make blood the city of God. The only place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fail or she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdom, kingdom fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob, our fortress. Come and see the work of the Lord, the desolation of has brought on the earth, but he makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He bumps the shield with fire. Sit here, then be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob, our fortress. Let's be the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's declare a song of victory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of all the praise. Of all the, all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's declare it with one voice. Let's sing his name, Yeshua. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sit, be seated in His presence. Church, there's just one thing I want to say that this is not orchestrated by men, church. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. So He gets all the praise, all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the next part of the service. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Can I ask you just for the next three or four minutes while we're doing the exhortation? Let's stay in this attitude of reverence. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not done with our worship. We not always emphasize this, but we are not done with our worship. Uh, our worship doesn't start with the music and ends with a song. It doesn't start, or it just it doesn't come to a close even after our service. Our worship is a life of worship, everything we do. So for the next few seconds or minutes, I'll be reading, you don't have to open, you don't have to open, I'll be reading from Mark chapter 12. I'll be just a short one. Uh, if at all possible, close your eyes, listen. Well, if you want to open, it's okay, but I'll be still worshiping, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus was in the temple, and he sat, verse 41, just listen, just sat next down the collection box in the temple, and watch as the crowds drop in their money. The crowds, many people, thousands, many rich put in the large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. It's purposely chosen, it has to be a widow. It doesn't say a lame, it doesn't say an orphan, it doesn't say a, a sick person, but it says a widow. In those days, widow was the most vulnerable person in the society, in the culture. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Here, the narration is two small coins. But further, we'll see something else. Two small coins, two we do. In those days, that would be the benefit that we have today. In this country or elsewhere, we don't, we don't have. Probably some help would be coming to this poor widow. But she came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, just for you to know that it doesn't go unnoticed. I tell you the truth, he said. This poor widow, she was not only a widow, she was a poor widow, has given more than all than others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of the surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. I want you to notice earlier on in verse 42, it says she dropped two small coins. That's the narration given by Mark. But now Jesus says she has given everything. Jesus knows, even saw, and even just sees everything you do and I do. So she's poor we do, has given everything she had to live on. Did she think that she didn't have food for tomorrow? There was no fridge, no cold storage in those days. And the Bible says she has given everything to live on. She has given everything. While we keep on giving, we are, we, we exhort you to give tithes and offering. You know that we never coerce, we don't ever, ever force anybody. But in this case, what we see here, this woman, this poor widow, nobody coerced her. She could have given one of the two coins, but she gave two. Later on, just going to qualify these two, he says these two, it was all she had. She didn't think of anything, but her love 
for the Lord, for the kingdom, in her worship, in the temple they were there for worshiping. The others, the rich and the thousands of the crowds missed the proper sense of worship. And this lady, when she gave, she understood the heart of worship. Worship, as I said, doesn't start with our music. It doesn't end with our worship. It's part of what we do. It's an expression of your heart. And this we do when she gave. Out of love, it was her expression of worship. So today, I would just like to urge in your heart, so you will be reminded, giving as you give, it has to be out of love. It can be sacrificial, but it's okay if the Lord leads you. I have known, I know people who have given more than one ties for a year. I know people who have given more than one or two or three offerings per week. I know people who have committed to give their salary for a couple of weeks, for months, because the Lord led them to. We are not asking you this, but you do what the Lord asks you. If the Lord puts in your heart, and today some heart will be touched because you are doing, expressing your heart of worship. Father, even as we pray today in the name of Jesus, Master, we pray that the, everyone who is here, Lord, everyone, Lord, will go a step further than the instruction. She will go into intimacy. And he or she will give. The little she will give. Or the big amount. Or any further commitment, Lord. Or sacrificial. It will be all because of your love. Because of who you are. So, Lord, we thank you. As you bless our brothers. Bless every family in this church and everywhere in all our creatures. May your mighty hands, Lord, be there to provide for them. Because, Lord, my God shall supply to all our needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. We had a powerful worship session. <laughs> Thank God for the praise and worship team. Amen. And uh, this is just as I believe I'm led to worship today. And may God take control. Holy Spirit take control in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Lay aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You're the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration I really want to worship you my Lord you are the one who died for me so I leave my voice to you in adoration come leave in me oh my 
take over Jesus come live in me and I will rise on ego oh come live in me live in us oh my my heart and I am yours forever and ever Lord I will love you you're the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free so I lift my voice to you in adoration What a powerful worship and wonderful song. You know, I miss that song. Thank you for singing that, Sister Faith. I think uh, when I was still instrumentalist, uh, we used to play that and sing that song. And it's so good to be reminded of the old songs as well. We're not saying we are old, but uh, there's anointing in the old songs as well. I know we are so blessed with the presence of God, but we still have to hear from His Word. Amen? Amen. And it's now our time to really settle and uh, let's hear what God wants to tell us. So each one of us. Uh, so if you uh, would join me as you stand, please. This is just right after the um, resurrection of Jesus. But every day... We celebrate resurrection. Amen? Because our God is not dead. He is alive. Come with me in John chapter 20. Uh, John chapter 20 from verse 24 to 31. I call this message uh, seeing and believing or believing and seeing. Two types of uh, a person. Okay? Seeing and believing or believing and seeing. I'm sure we would be on that latter rather than the former. John chapter 20, verse 24. Now, Thomas, anyone here called Thomas? Oh, thank you, Lord. There's no Thomas. Now, Thomas called the twin. That's the, uh, uh, the Greek name, uh, old uh, uh, Didymos, which means twin. One of the twelve was not with them, not with the disciples, when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see him in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days his disciples were Again inside, gathered together, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Shalom, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here. Put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We know that your word is living and powerful and that your word, O oh God, will empower, strengthen, and guide us. Holy Spirit, you are the great preacher. Speak to us that we would not just be hearers, but above all, doers of your word. All in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone would declare, Amen. 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 Can we give another clap of praise to God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. Thank God for his presence, and it all confirms even the word for today. Now, last Sunday, we commemorated the Easter resurrection. But you know, church, every day is a resurrection celebration. Because our God is not dead. He is alive. So, God showed up. First to who? Mary Magdalene. And then next to the two men, disciples on the road to Emmaus. I preached that last Sunday, remember? And then Jesus, after leaving the two men in Emmaus, he went to the disciples. But there was one absent. Can you remember a brother or sister absent today? She's not, he's not beside you. Let's pray and encourage them. Amen. Because they're going to miss something, I believe. Like Thomas miss it. We've seen the Lord, the disciples said, with all the joy overflowing. They were overflowing with joy, the gladness. We have seen the Lord Thomas. Where were you? Thomas was in the room of despair, disappointment, frustration, discouragement. You name them. He's in a, a gloomy, gloomy, dark situation of his life at that time. All right? Uh, not just doubting, but refusing to believe. Uh, Thomas, didn't we tell you? We've seen the Lord. Uh, the other ten. Ten disciples, each one of them telling Thomas, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. You must come with us. Do not miss the next meeting. You see, church, how important it is the gathering in the presence of the Lord. Don't you miss the gathering in the presence of the Lord. When we assemble together like on a Sunday worship service, we do not come here for the pastor, elder, brother, sister, or the worship leader, instrumentalist. We come for Jesus, for the presence of the Lord our God. And we thank God for the presence of our brothers and sisters. They also encourage us, of course. But <laughs> I don't have any ring. Because I've learned, you know, it's so sensitive. That's why I don't wear that. But have we paid our VAT? VAT. <laughs> that might be a reminder. Have you paid your tax? <laughs> but anyway, joking aside. So, but. Thomas was not there. He missed that first appearance of the Lord Jesus to the other ten disciples. Forget about Judas. Judas has been dead. He hung himself. He was so guilty of his sin before the Lord. So suicide. Suicide is not from God. It's from the devil. So be set free from that mentality or spirit and have joy and peace through the Lord Jesus. But Thomas was not there. He is still discouraged and could not believe. I will not believe until I see the print on his hands and on his side. I would touch his side. Not all who comes in a gathering truly believes. Do you agree with me? But I pray that in this church, we're not here to pretend. We're here 
to demonstrate our faith. Coming to church in assembly of God's people is a demonstration declaration of your faith in the Lord our God. This is no program of men or the pastors, leaders of the church. This is the program of God. Many mentions in the Bible do not forsake the gathering of the believers. For in doing so, you encourage one another. More so, more so, the day is approaching. What is that day? Is it your birthday? Is it your Christmas day? What day is that? Capital D and then AY. It's about towards the coming of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming soon. More so, the day is approaching, the last days now. So the more we must be strong in the Lord. And the gathering is really vital in strengthening us, encouraging us. But Thomas missed that gathering of the first appearance of the Lord to the disciples. He's doubting about the presence of the Lord. He's still stuck on that uh, suffering of Jesus uh, where he had received the stripes and the uh, crown of thorns on his head, carried that uh, heavy cross towards Mount Calvary, and then finally nailed on the cross at 3 p.m. Friday that time. Thomas is still stuck on that gloomy, gloomy Saturday that there is no indication whatsoever that Jesus is alive. So he's still in the past. But it's time to be awakened. It's time to move forward. Hello, church. We have got to move forward. Don't get stuck in the past. Because that discouragement, frustration, or even disappointment, the devil could use it to pull you down. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would be lifted up. You would be encouraged. You would be strengthened by the Lord. And so, uh, when we are together in unity in the presence of God, the Bible says there is, it's good and pleasing. It's pleasant. And there's anointing of the Holy Spirit, what we had experienced earlier. Did you receive it? Amen. Oh, I think not all. I'm going to call Brother Abby again. To lead us again in worship with the team. Did we receive the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit? Amen. It's the very presence of God. Amen. So uh, we received that. There's blessing and anointing when we are gathered together in the presence of the Lord. I remember a story of a couple. And there are some couples here. Getting ready on a Sunday morning. Just like what we do as well. And the wife look at the husband. Oh, he's not getting ready at all. So the wife asked the husband, aren't you getting ready for church? She is so looking forward. And the husband said, no, I'm not going to church. And the wife said, give me reasons why you are not coming with me to church. <laughs> give me reasons. And the husband said, three reasons. First, the congregation is cold. I don't like the congregation. Second, they don't like me there. Third, I just don't like to go to church. And so the husband is done. And the wife looks straight at his eyes. Look at me. I also have three reasons why. You need to come with me in church today. First, the congregation is on fire, not cold. They are warm. Second, the congregation loves you. They like you. Third, you are the pastor. You should be in church. <laughs> After that, I've got to drink water. I really need to drink water after that. I heard that many years ago, and you know what? I was, I was also laughing as a young people or youth. Wow. <laughs> you got to go to church. You are the pastor of the church. Let's not miss it, church. This is my prayer today, and not just today. 
that we should not miss if we can. Well, God understands there are situations, circumstances that we could not make it, but we're still in a life of worship. Amen? But I believe it's not every Sunday that you are not able to come and gather together. This is ordained by God. This is commanded by God. By the way, this is not an option. If you read the Bible, it is a command from God that we should gather together. Not neglecting or forsaking the gathering together in His presence. For where two or three are gathered in my name. Jesus said, I am in the midst of them. So the presence of the Lord is here. So then, that's what happened. They have received, they enjoyed the presence of God when they gathered together. But the Lord is so amazing. He's omniscient. He knows the prayer of Thomas. Thomas said, unless I touch I saw the marks on his hands and touched his side. I will not believe that. Though God realized that it's not a good attitude, but we all go through that kind of level of maturity in faith. Amen? Amen. As long as we would level up in faith. God understands that our faiths go through different levels and it's not yet strong like Thomas. Remember the account of John about Thomas when Jesus was about to go to respond to Mary and Martha, Lazarus is dead. And the Jewish, the Jews, wants to stone Jesus and that they have to go. And Thomas said, Lord, and telling the disciples, let's die with the Lord. Wow, 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 wow. Thomas, it's wow. Huh? As I said, sometimes we don't know what we're talking about. And then Thomas, Jesus said in John 14, uh, you know where I'm going. What did Thomas said when Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life? Remember this story? You know where I'm going. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. Hence, let me say it again. We need to truly understand the word of the Lord. Amen, church? Not just by our own understanding. Through the Holy Spirit. Meditate. Carefully think. Reflect. Meditate through the Holy Spirit of the Word of God. Don't just hear the Word of God Sunday after Sunday. Coming into your right ear. And then going out to your left ear. You would be like Thomas. I will die with you Lord. And it never happened. And then Lord we don't know where you're going. So he didn't understand the word of the Lord. And now what happened to him? He's not believing unless I see the marks. You see, that's what had happened if you would not be truly founded on the word of God. When the testing of faith comes, you will be shaken Frustrated, disappointed, but I pray, and through the word of God, you would be built up, empowered, no matter what trial or testing, you still hold on to the word of God, church. Amen? The second meeting, Thomas was there because Jesus heard his prayer. Unless I see the mark. Look carefully as we progress in this story. Now Jesus, the door is shut, locked. Because they were afraid of the Jews. They would be um, killed. The threat of the Jews, the followers of Jesus would also be killed. They want to stone them. So they thought they are safe if the doors are locked. <laughs> it's not the locked door that makes you and me safe. It's in the presence of the Lord that we are safe. And suddenly Jesus just came and of course they were surprised again whoa sudden you know through and through the walls the doors if the tomb could not have dominion over him how much more the doors locked <laughs> it would not have dominion or it would not stop him in coming and appearing himself, manifesting. 
Maybe the Jewish people, they could be stopped, but the Lord could manifest wherever we are. Amen? Amen. He can demonstrate His presence. And the Lord said, Shalom, peace to you. How many of us needs peace? Yes, 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 we need it. We need it. Peace in our hearts, in our mind. Jesus said, Shalom, peace. The world needs peace. The nations need peace. Families, homes need peace. This country, UK, needs peace. The true peace is in the presence of the Prince of Peace. It's not just the absence of noise, conflict, or war, or trouble. It's the presence of the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace is Jesus. The Lord Jesus. So He manifested. There is peace in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says that He will keep us in perfect peace. Remember, perfect peace to those who trust in Him. That's the peace of the Lord. When we have peace with God, then we will have the peace of God. Do you, do you understand that? As the Bible says, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, and Philippians 4, 7, we have peace with God first. We have been reconciled with God through faith in the Lord Jesus. He had forgiven us. We're together again with God. Meaning to say we have peace with God. It's all like when you forgive each other. If your friend, family, loved ones offended you or you have offense against each other. But you reconciled, you know, you forgave each other. Then you are back together again, isn't it? So the same with us with God. He forgave us of our sins. So we are back together with God. We have the peace with God. And because of that, we have the peace of God. That's the result. The peace of God comes after we have the peace with God. Are you following me? Amen. So therefore, even in times of trouble, even if I don't see the Lord yet, this is what Thomas should do. Lord, I do not see you yet appearing to us. This is now Saturday. But you did say, Lord, that on the third day you will rise again. I have peace. I have peace, Lord. I'm settled at your word. Tomorrow is the third day. I will see you. I'm going to look forward like Mary Magdalene. Looking forward to see the Lord, her Lord and our Lord. So then we have peace in the Lord even of the challenges in life. Or the trials and testings that we face. One of the big tests that you are truly matured in the word of God. Is you still have peace despite of difficulties. Amen? Amen. You are still settled. Still in the presence of the Lord. Because you know that the Lord is with you. He would never leave you nor forsake you. But Thomas, in this story, no, until I see the marks on his hand and on his side, then I would believe. Remember, church, fear, Thomas has the spirit of fear. Fear always looks to the danger. That's what fear is all about. But faith looks to the master, our Lord Jesus Christ. So the rest of the disciples, they are settled. They have peace because they are focusing on the Lord Jesus. They are looking at the Lord, not on what the Jewish people would do, the threat or the danger, but in the peace of the Lord. And the same way for us, uh, let's remain in the peace of the Lord our God. Jesus said, peace I give unto you. Peace I leave unto you. Not the world giveth or gives, but I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Listen carefully. Only when your hearts or your life will be still, when you have the peace of the Lord. 
Then he said, let not your hearts be troubled because we have the peace of the Lord. He is in us and do not be afraid. You could not reverse that statement that you want, you like to have, um, um, you will not be afraid and you would not be troubled. No, you could not reverse that. You should have peace of the Lord in your life first and we will not be afraid or our hearts would not be troubled. A lot of people in this world are troubled. They've got no peace. They are depressed. Let's share that gospel of peace, church. It could be our loved ones or member of a family, you know, going through different trial or testing or whatever circumstance. When I was young, what I learned about peace is <laughs> the traditional way that uh, when the minister would say, peace, psh, psh, psh. you know, I didn't understand that actually in traditional religion, you know, make peace, psh, psh. and you know, I was, I was even annoyed because the saliva of that guy next to me, when he said, psh, psh, I said, I don't like this kind of peace, you know, throwing saliva. I didn't understand that, but only until I came to know Jesus. Believe and receive as I repented of my sins. Believe and receive and confess the Lord Jesus as the only Savior and Lord. Then that's the time I experienced and understood what His peace is all about. You are my peace, Lord. You are my peace. I am still in your presence. I have lots of testimonies about this. Time is not enough. And one thing I could not forget, when we have the fire in the house, in our own house here in Carshelton, that's when the Lord truly, truly brought me to another level of understanding peace. While I'm so worried and troubled about my daughter's health condition, diagnosed with kidney problem and the ureter problem, all of that. And then the fire in the house on August 2008, 8-0-8-2-0-0-8. See? Fire. And then I've got to come home up from work, rushing. And all you see, black. Your house used to be white or cream white. It's all black. Colored black. And you know, but I saw them. They are well. They are fine. In our neighbor's place, my joy was overflowing. My wife, my loving, submissive wife, she is in the afternoon service. She's there with the little kids that time. My joy, wow. Thank you, Lord, they are safe. Peace in the Lord, amen? Peace in the Lord. And I came to receive the report of the fire brigade. The report of what happened in the house. It's all black, even inside, as we went around. And I just sat down in the living room for a moment after the report. Of course, with my mask on. And I just prayed to God, Lord, just give me peace. Peace, please. I just want peace. Peace, Lord, peace. And then I went to the master bedroom, our bedroom. And when I went there to just have a look, I stepped on a little keychain. Amazing God answering our prayers. When I stepped on that little keychain, I had a look. Do you know what it says in there? Could you remember? It says in the keychain, when you put your mind on God, he will give you peace of mind. I cried. Lord, I just said it down there. Just give me peace, Lord. And now, with so many places that I could step on something, I step on this keychain. The Lord had answered my prayer. When you keep your mind, put your mind on God, he will give you peace of mind. And so I started, continued to just 
focus on the Lord. Lord, no matter what had happened, I look unto you. You will cause all things for good. You turn even bad things for good to those who love you and are called by your purpose. All things work together for good. Amen, church. Amen. We have peace in the Lord. Let's give a clap of praise to God. Hallelujah. And then Thomas reached out. Look, really precise. This is what the Lord said. Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, come on, come on, come, come, come. Reach your finger here. And look at my hands. Reach your hand here on the side. And put it on my side. So do not be unbelieving, but believing. This is literally, literally what Thomas said. Unless, unless I saw the marks and touch even the side. Then I would believe. That's exactly what the Lord told Thomas. You see, how God answers us? Precise. Don't you ever think, oh Lord, you didn't answer it the way I like it to be answered. Or it's not what I ask from you. When God answers us, it's definite, absolute, precise. Amen? Amen. Church, I think you need peace in your mind. Let me just pray for a moment. The Holy Spirit is just leading me. Father, I just pray right now for your people. We had a wonderful worship. It was amazing in your presence. Lord, whatever is bothering each one or whoever, you know, oh God. I just pray. I just said, peace, remove, remove those things that are bothering my brother, my sister here, oh God. And let your peace, shalom, shalom, peace reigns in every heart and every mind. Even of those joining us online. Lord, that we will look unto you despite of our situations or challenges. Despite of what's happening around us. We would always look unto you. And when we look unto you, focus unto you, we are rest assured in your presence, we thank you that we could receive your word. We need your word so that our lives would be guided, empowered, and that we would be even reminded to hold on your promises despite of the challenges. All this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone would say, Amen. Amen. Let's just give a clap of praise to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, it's really important. There are times I have got to pray like that. Lord, I could not think properly. Lord, there's so many things going on in my mind. And the Lord just want me to pause for a moment. And just be still in his presence. And just lift up my heart by faith and pray, Lord. Just like that day. I just want peace, please, Lord. And the Lord answers us. So Thomas, his prayer was precisely answered by the Lord Jesus. And all that Thomas could say, this is true. And he proclaimed, my Lord and my God. Take note, no one had ever said that proclamation after Jesus appeared to other disciples. No one had said that except Thomas, he was just honest about his little doubt and he wants to see. He was just honest. He's still growing in faith. He's not that strong faith as yet. So he was honest before the Lord and the Lord answered his prayer, showed, manifested himself in our darkest situation, in our difficult times. He manifests himself. My Lord and my God, he answered your prayer. You got healed and all you could say, oh, my Lord and my God, God saved your family. All you could say, my Lord and my God, you're going to proclaim the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, you set me free from my vices or bondage of sin. My Lord and my God, you provided for our needs when it's very impossible, impossible that we would be provided. My Lord and my God. You declare and proclaim the name of Jesus. There was a restoration of the faith of Thomas. 
restoration in the presence of the Lord. There's an awakening, rekindling of the fire. When we had the worship, there was the rekindling of the fire of the Holy Spirit. There is revival, restoration. When your faith had been tested and like, hmm, had been shallow, had been down for a little bit, but the Lord would rekindle the fire in you. He would revive you. He would strengthen you, restore you. To where you should be. Amen. You would not remain down there always. He would restore you like he did to Thomas. Look at the end what Jesus said. Jesus said to Thomas. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But, however, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So church, it's not to see, it's to believe. But believe and you will see. Because blessing belongs to those who believe even if we don't see yet. For we know we will see it as we trust the Lord. There is blessing in the presence of God. If you miss, like earlier on, could you have missed the worship service? You missed that anointing. The fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. So when we are gathered in the presence of God, there is blessing. The blessing of salvation, the blessing of forgiveness, the blessing of joy and peace and the love, His grace, the blessing of healing. It's in the presence of God. Amen, church. It's in the presence of God. It's not in the presence of these instruments. It's not in the presence of the leaders. But when we are gathered together in His presence, He just manifests through the instruments. He manifests through each one of us. It's about His presence. I'm saying, church, the very purpose why we gather together it's because of his presence never forget that i'm going to church or gathering of the believers there is assembly of god's people i'm going for the lord i'm going for the lord and uh, please don't have this kind of attitude which i used to have when i was a young people i know that there is food in the church that's why i'm going to the church there's always food. That's not why we come to church. Go to the restaurant. There's food. We come here for spiritual food for the Lord. That's the ultimate purpose. We want more of the presence of God. I like as I end this message what Jesus said to Thomas once again on that verse 29. Blessed are those who have not seen. And yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. What have you been trusting God for? That you don't see it yet with your naked eye. But you know with your eye of faith. It's done. It's done. It's there. And he would just manifest it. Don't be impatient. Don't doubt. Doubt would never bring you there. To seeing the manifestation. No. But when you believe, that's the, what the Lord Jesus said. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Let's all stand on our feet. God is so good. God is amazing. Hallelujah. If you study those stories, and if you think, oh, if I was there, what would be your reaction? What would be your feeling? Sometimes, you know, when I study events like this or stories in the Bible, oh, Lord, what, would, what could it be if I was there? But it would just be amazing. Awesome presence of the Lord God Almighty. And His presence is in you and me, church. Don't forget that. Through the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, His presence is in you and me. So we don't have to get jealous with the other disciples. The Lord that promised, and it's true, we have His presence in us. He never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. As everyone would just ponder, meditate on the message, the Word of God, 
and even to those joining online. I want each one to remain in attitude of worship and meditating on the Word of God. It's very important. Carefully think and reflect on the Word of God. That we would not be to cease to believe, but we would believe and we would see. Many times the Lord had proved that. Not just in word, but as the Bible says, even in deeds. Let there be no room in your, in your mind or heart for doubt. Never, never doubt what the Lord could do. Never doubt His presence. And of course, never miss His presence. We always want more of His presence in us. More of the Holy Spirit. And so as you are here today, first I want to pray for newcomers before I forget. Is there any newcomers? First time, it's your first time to come. As a church, we always pray for the first time. There's, there's a sister here. God bless you. Wow. I'm, can we just thank God for these sisters? God bless you. God bless you. Others, oh, there's, there's one more. Yeah. Praise God. So, three ladies here. The, if I could just ask, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Have you received Jesus Christ in your heart, in your life? So you, you do. You had, you had. Yeah. And you, you had received Jesus Christ. Praise God. So they all had received Jesus Christ in their lives. So for that, we uh, give glory and praise God. But we want to pray for them, for uh, the blessing, the strengthening of the Lord, that they would continue in their walk with Jesus. So let's pray for them. I believe our brother is not the first time. Um, I think he invited this young lady here. So God bless you for inviting her. And so let's pray for uh, these sisters and those joining online. If this is your first time, just open up your heart. Open up your mind, your life to Jesus. And, and just, just talk to God from your heart by faith. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Repent of your sins. And, and, and just... Open your heart. Welcome and, and, and receive the Lord Jesus in your life. Just do that by faith. Do it by faith. With sincerity in your heart. For the Lord said that He would come and be with you. And uh, He would give you a gift of life. Salvation through faith in Him. And so let's pray for these newcomers. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this beautiful Sunday. Above all, we thank you for your presence. It is your love that... Uh, draw us to you, even bringing these uh, sisters, oh God, ladies, in your presence. Because of your love, they are here, oh God. You have a great plan and purpose for each one of them. Lord, I pray that they would continue to walk by faith. Not looking to the right or left, but looking unto you, focusing unto you. Strengthen their faith, oh God, that they will grow in the knowledge of your grace. Through your word, O oh God, they will be empowered. I pray, Lord, that your great purpose would be accomplished in each one of them. I believe, Lord, I believe that you have blessed them with gifts and talents and that you have a calling for each one of them. I just pray, Lord, that talents and gifts would be used to glorify you and your calling shall be accomplished in their lives. And so we pray for your grace and your blessing and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be upon each one of them and remain with them as they follow you and trust you. In Jesus' mighty name we all pray. Everyone would say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. What's your name? Renee. Welcome, Renee. And you? Raquel. Are you sisters or? <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. But sisters in the Lord. And your name? Huh? Rizal? Rizal. All letters are Rene, Raquel, and Rachel. Rizal. Rizal. All letters are 
And for that, then the fourth R, let's rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Church, uh, before we come to the final uh, closing prayer, there's something very important that we got to do. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, yes, communion. So, and then we would be praying for our brother Sam and sister Annalou. Brother Sam uh, to be one of the elders of the church and sister Annalou as the new chair of the trustees. But before that, we're going to partake of our communion. And before the leaders or pastors, elders distribute that, we just want to pray. If we bow our heads and pray, Father, we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your grace upon each one of us. And Lord, consecrate our hearts. Even examine us, Lord. Examine ourselves. The Lord, forgive us if we have sinned before you. Make us worthy even to partake of the bread and what's in the cup. Not forgetting the covenant of your blood, the blessing of the power of your death and resurrection upon us. Lord, we believe and understand this as we receive it by faith. All in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone would say, Amen. Please do not eat or drink yet. We will all do that together after the scripture. Please do not eat or drink yet. We will all do that after the scripture. Those who are joining online, you may now get your bread and and the cup. But do not eat or drink yet. We will all do that after the scripture.
Church, as we are gathered together in unity in the presence of the Lord Almighty, Jesus, together with the disciples, came together in the Lord's Supper in Matthew chapter 26, also in verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. Let's never forget Jesus. Let's all eat. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's never forget Jesus until we see him face to face. Let's all drink. Just express your gratitude. Just thank God. Thank God for the blessing of blood covenant, for the healing of sickness and disease. Thank God for the salvation of your life, the salvation of your family. Thank God for the covering protection through his precious blood you thank God for the freedom freedom from slavery of sin and of the devil you thank God for what he has done to you and me we thank God hallelujah 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 just one more time just sing that song uh, the last part of that song and just as we sing that you know we're grateful to God for his amazing love. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, only through the blood of Jesus. But the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Just one more time, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As I said earlier, we're going to pray for our brother Sam. If we could just call brother Sam, the pastors, elders are here to surround. We're also going to call sister Analu. Would you come here, brother Sam and sister Analu? And the pastors, elders to surround them as they face you, congregation. And of course, before God above all. As I mentioned earlier, we thank God for the lives of our brother Sam and sister Analu as they are committed to the Lord, devoted to the Lord, and to the work that God had called them to do. As we call pastors behind them and elders. Yes. And so we unite ourselves together.
But before we would pray, we want to declare the word of the Lord. In Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, And Jesus came and spoke to them, to the disciples and followers of the Lord, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things that I had commanded you. And lo and behold, surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And it says there, Amen. Amen. So brother Sam and sister Anna Lou, we know you are not committing to man, but you are committing to God. Will you continue to devote to the word of God, to be faithful and committed to the Lord and to the ministry that he wants you to do? I just want to hear yes, pastor. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's good to hear from them that we are not forcing this on them. But this is from God. And so the blessing, the anointing of the Lord to be upon them. Church, again, as Brother Sam, we would be praying to be an elder of the church. And Sister Anna Lou, the new chair of the trustees. If you know and believe, understand the laying of hands, stretch forth your hand towards our brother and sister. As we all pray together in unity. Heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth. The Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, the King of Kings. We honor and declare you, even at this point, oh God, through the lives of our brother Sam and sister Anna Lou. Lord, for you have plans for each one of them. Plans to prosper you, prosper them, and not to harm them. Plans to give them hope and a good future. I thank you, Lord, for the leading and the guidance of your Holy Spirit to always be upon each one of them. For Brother Sam, as an elder of the church, and for Sister Anna Lou, as a chair of the trustees, I pray for wisdom and knowledge, O oh God, that could not be received from this world, but from you alone, through the gift of your Holy Spirit, to be upon our brother and our sister in the name of Jesus. I also pray, Lord, for the increase of the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be upon each one of them. Lord, that they would also be discerning. Lord, that they would be sensitive to the leading, the work, and the move of your Holy Spirit. And truly, that they would continue to devote into your word. And even, Lord, that the declaration of their mouth is praises unto you and your word be proclaimed. Through them, they are vessels of the gospel of peace for the salvation of all. And so, Lord God, with the authority that you've given to the church and even given to me as the minister, pastor, of keys of the kingdom ministries life in the spirit fellowship international lord i release your anointing of your holy spirit to be upon my brother son in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit in jesus name father i also release the anointing of your holy spirit to be upon my sister analu in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, we give you the highest praise, the adoration. The glory belongs to you, for they will serve you wholeheartedly for your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name, we all pray. And everyone would say and declare, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And later, you could congratulate our brother and sister. And let's continue to prayerfully support them. They need our support as well. Hallelujah. Amazing God, isn't it? Amazing God. Let's all rejoice in the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. Amazing God. And we know there are more that God is calling. The call and the will of God, nothing compares. Isn't it, Pastor Mannix? No regret. Yes, it's amazing. And so let's continue to progress in the Lord. Let's uh, close in prayer. Almighty Father God, what a wonderful Sunday. You never failed us. You showed up, Lord. Just like you showed up to the disciples in the early church. You manifested yourself and you continue to manifest in us, through us. Lord, not only every Sunday, but we believe every moment of our life is a moment with you, Jesus. Lord, we're not moving forward without you going ahead of us and coming with us. Thank you, Lord. We cast all our burden and cares unto you for your love and care us for us. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is more than enough in whatever situation, challenge, or trial testing that we face. We know we have the victory through you, Jesus. And Lord, I'm just reminded, we don't want to miss another revelation from here. There's a sister who come, came to me earlier that she wants to share something. Would you come now, Sister Noemi, and share what the Lord spoke through you? The Lord is um, saying that, um, Behold, I will make new things. It will spring forth. Will you not know it? I, the Lord, at the right time, will make it happen. I, the Lord, at the right time, will make it happen. And I asked the Lord what about this. And uh, the Lord said, your prayers are not forget forgotten. Regarding the be building, yes. the prayers are not forgotten. At the right time, the Lord will make it. And some people, some of us here are, or online are praying for a child. It is not forgotten. At the right time, the Lord will make it happen. That marital relationship, at the right time, the Lord will make it happen. The, the thing that you've been asking and crying for. Be at peace. Rest assured, the Lord. Don't forget. Hallelujah. Can we give praise to God? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the words, revelation that you've spoken through your servants here, oh God. And Lord, we know it's yes and amen. In your name, Jesus. Yes, oh God, we would never forget that what you said, it came to pass, it will come to pass, and we would continue to be fulfilled. And so we trust your word, Lord. We trust your word. And so the blessing and the anointing of God Almighty through the Holy Spirit to be upon every man, woman, even to the young ones. As we face the new week, we declare it's victorious, blessed week as the Lord lead and guide us. And we give Him the highest praise and the glory. The honor belongs to Him. All in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone will declare, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Just before you go, church, I'm traveling to the Philippines this week to attend our main church convention and anniversary. The next weekend, I would be in our church in Manila. If you have any family in Manila, Metro Manila, our church in uh, just opposite Araneta Center in Cubao, Quezon City, Manila. So I'll be there Saturday, Sunday. And the outreaches of... San, Hons, San Jose del Monte Bulacan. I'm becoming like English, could not pronounce. San Jose del Monte Bulacan. And Munoz, I'll be there next weekend. And the following week, I'll be in our main church. I need your prayers and support, please. Would you pray for me as Pastor Manix would lead? Pray for me. I need your prayers. Thank you. Yeah. And Sister Julie is also... She's also going. Yeah, I'm going ahead. I would prepare the way for her. Above all, the Lord prepares our way. Yeah. For Adam was created first before Eve. Okay. It's just a humor, okay? Don't take it literally. Amen. Hallelujah. Come here. Sir. All right. Let's all pray together. Hallelujah. Master. 
oh glory we give you all the praise all the honor that is due to you lord father thank you that you're in our midst and indeed father you're leading uh, our steps in everything we need to do lord even as your servant and sir julie will be traveling to the philippines lord we put them in your safe hand hallelujah god may they travel from here all the way to the philippines and to the uh, to to the other parts of the provinces lord wherever they have to go we praise that your angels are going before them hallelujah and lord above all father make the journey fruitful wherever they go father let there be the light uh, and the shine for the god the salt uh, and give taste to wherever they go father we pray that the mission will be successful the anointed the protect and above all father your wisdom be upon them as you speak everywhere father father we thank you your favor your favor surround the righteous you're surrounded by your favor and blessing in everything you do father we thank you and you give praise and all this we ask in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ and everyone will say amen and amen thank you so much thank you for the prayer I shall return. See you soon, God willing. I shall return. It'll be a quick journey. God bless you all. Shake hands with one another.